All right, guys, Ron and myself, we're hooking full-size motorcycles on the strapping wings. Back to work. Yeah, back to work. <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm wiring up my inverter. Since Scrappy has got a giant solar system. Why don't we do a model of a solar system? Wingtip to wingtip, completely covered in solar panels. I have the ability to do an inverter and put 110 power. I'm gonna put a port inside my luggage baggage compartment, 110 power. I'll put another one on the outside of the aircraft, inside a flip down in the wing so you can just come and plug in under my wing. So if it were raining, you don't have to open up your luggage area and you can plug in straight into a nice dry safe area. But this 1200 watt inverter is sized for about 99% of everything I'm gonna do a Scrappy. So I can run anything I'm gonna need for camping, lights, fans, even a little mini projector. I've always wanted to do this in the back country at 14,000 or 12,000 feet, wherever we can find a cool spot, blow up and have a movie night on top of a mountain. So this is gonna allow me to do it. Now, since I've got three sets of batteries on here, the normal set for the engine, a full giant set in one wing, another set in another wing, all EarthX batteries, I've got a lot of battery storage capacity on board. And with all the solar, it's gonna to stay top everywhere I go while I fly, when I land. And then through the night, I can run anything I want all night long. And this is gonna work perfect for it. However, for those of you electrician friends of mine that are wondering, why do you have a 120 amp connector on the end of a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter? Well, it's pretty simple. And the same reason I have a large wiring system going throughout Scrappy, and it did add weight, and I may only use it 1% of the time, but the reason I want it, and that 1% is the most important part to me, and that is that Scrappy is a search and rescue vehicle. That's one of the things I love to do, Mark and I do, we do it in the helicopter, we've done it in our bush planes, and there are times, specifically one I can remember, where we had someone stuck inside a underground cave and we needed hammer drills, grinders, and everything to try and get this person out. And we're in the middle of nowhere. And that's not the only time we really wish we had a generator or power on top of a mountain or way in the backcountry when we got back there with, a, with guys hiking. And so I want Scrappy to be capable of running big equipment. Now this can run drills and fans and things like that. But I have this giant connector so that inside Scrappy, everything is upsized so that I can go to an oversized inverter that is big enough to run heavy equipment. Everything from welders, grinders, cutoff wheels. If someone literally bent their gear in the backcountry, I wanna be able to go out with my camping gear, land, and we can take out grinders and tools and raw pipe and just build them and weld up a new gear and let them fly back out. So, um, you know, it actually sounds fun to me. Spend a day or two camping and fabricate an entire gear set if we had to, but more importantly, it's for search and rescue to give us unlimited power when we need it. Now, could I run indefinitely nonstop with a welder, even with all those solar panels? No, but I do have enough battery storage capacity to do quite a bit of welding and Weld a set of gear, no problem. I might have to pause every now and then and let it recharge if I was doing a lot at once, but that's the idea. So this will be a quick interchange. This will be a scrappy all of the time, 110 power everywhere I need it, but can be unplugged and plugged in and the whole aircraft converts to a high, high output traveling welder. So anyway, I'm super excited about that. To give you a comparison, this is the size of connector you could use on something like this. But uh, I, I know it's gonna be more weight. It's one of the reasons I built Scrappy and made custom spars and over-engineered the wings. I want to be able to put anything inside Scrappy and have it be well below its G-loading capacity and be able to take anything I want wherever I want. You guys know the drill. I'm gonna get back to work.
All right, guys. Mike Patey, Mark Patey, for those of you who don't know. Super excited. We are both going to Oshkosh, so we can't wait to see you there. Most of you may already know this. We have Best Tugs aircraft moving equipment. We have our Best Tugs booth there, so we'll be hanging out at the booth a lot. I hope you come see us. We also are launching our Best Scrubber line, part of our Best Aviation products. And we want you to come check out what makes them extra special, very cool. And we have a surprise, big black tarp. We're gonna uncover something really cool we've been working on in the background here at Best Tugs. So I hope you guys all come join us. Tuesday, we're gonna uncover something new in the Best Tugs booth. So I hope you come hang out with us. We'll see you at Oshkosh. We got a whole week of fun coming up. Back to work. All right, guys, we're getting closer. We're now working on the top skin of Scrappy. You can see we've got all kinds of stuff going on with big giant holes in it. There's actually four layers of steps from little thin ones that are just creating thickness and then steps and then tongue and groove steps. What all these holes are for is the solar system. Hey, how about we use a ping pong ball for Pluto? That covers Scrappy's wing tip to tip all the way down. This is the system. We're putting in all the steps. The solar panel itself will actually set on the top of the wing so it could be removed for, for service, but it drops down into a shelf we're making that goes perfectly flush with the top skin so there's no line whatsoever. It arcs the wing and at the front where the critical point is where you don't want air to get under an edge of that panel, I've made laser set components that when they're all riveted together, the, the panel can sit on the top and then slide a full inch tongue and groove engagement into the front of the wing. So the air coming over the top only has the 0.025 metal thickness step, just like any other wing. And then the rest is perfectly flush. So it bolts down at all these nut plate locations that has cross pass through nut plate locations to pick up the middle, the shelf at the front and the back. And then right here where you see a missing uh, support stiffener right there. That's because we use these. These are a combination solar power panel mount bracket comboed with the attachment. You can see the rear spar passes through it. Every other main rib, so it adds additional support to the spar that is passing through it all so the spar can't begin to bow one way or the other to keep that spar even stronger. So if spar support, mid-rib location, solar panel mount, don't make sense when I'm done. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys. So we're working on the solar system. A man and his boy making planets. Here's all the solar panels going in Scrappy. Now solar panels, they all come with the control head unit right here on the other side. So we had to carefully cut out the plastic, cut out around the terminal tab, bend them to the back side, make some new pieces of plastic, and then we're gonna bond them all in and relocate them. And then on the top side, you won't even see we touched it. New plastic, it should be as good as new. And then that entire section where that joint was done is sliding into a tongue and groove, two pieces of aluminum on the skin. So there's no way that even though it's a bonded in uh, seamed joint, that joint is between aluminum. So should be in good shape. Time to glue it up. It's been a lot of work. But I didn't have Dylan right there working. <laughs> My son helping. He kind of took over this project. We did a couple together. He did the rest, so it's awesome having my son here with me. Let's get back to work. I couldn't be more excited about this part of the build. And I've got 
big battery banks in each wing. I'm using Earth X because they're lithium, they're extremely lightweight. They also have safety features built in and dummy lights that wire to my Garmin screen. So if there's any battery problem, I will know about it. And I have a turn dial complete disconnect that will turn off that bank and I can still use another. So right now you can see this is one of my wing solar panels. And there's another one for the same wing and then another that looks just like this for the other wing. So I've got 18 solar panels on Strappy, a big inverter, 110 wall plugs throughout, also 110 plug under the wing with a quick release latch that drops down that I can plug in high power if I wanted to run a welder or something larger. Uh, but these are about ready to get installed. Now, I am giving up a bit of weight, but this is something I have just been dying to do since I started the concept of Scrappy. It's all about search and rescue, camping, going places I have never been before, setting up camp and having unlimited power, uh, ability to work on a computer, maybe run a TV, blow up a big, giant, big screen TV at 12,000 feet if I want to, and play movies all night long and have enough battery capacity on board to do it. So this is how I'm gonna do it, a battery bank per wing. So EarthX, thank you for making your great product and safety feature light so I know that everything's okay. You guys know the drill. Let's get it installed, back to work. I'm yelling because the fans are on. <laughs> uh, the wings are finally ready for paint. You can see right here, nine of the solar panel bays. Nine more solar panel bays over there. 18 total solar panels. I'm super excited to get power on here. 110 power. Power of my toys, my electric motorcycles that will be hanging underneath Scrappy's wings real soon. So we're going to push it into the tent. Wipe it down one more time. Hopefully the paint goes well. <laughs> because if it does, by tomorrow night, they'll be painted with both of them on Scrappy. Lately, all I've been doing is making scraps. So we should change Scrappy's name to Steel Scrappy for all the scraps we made. But we actually found a little use for Draco parts. So you can see a little bit of red in there. Make sure we get a couple more pieces of Draco in there. This is some um, tapered fuel sensing probe uh, adapters that were on Draco, goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank, so we'll have perfect reading. A little piece of Draco in Scrappy's wings. <laughs> Back to work. All right, guys, it's Ron. Yes, the guy behind the camera. It is 12.28 in the morning, but check out what we got, a new paint booth. Why do we need another paint booth? Because we have not just one wing being painted, but we have two wings being painted, twice as fast. Let's put some wings on Scrappy.
Okay, check this out. Scrappy is going to get his wings. This is so awesome. All right guys, the wings are painted. So we're gonna quickly just do a quick trial fit of all the solar panels in this wing. And I'm gonna go through some of the basics, maybe answer some of the questions some of you may have had along the way. So before I cover them up, you can see the wing tip to wing tip torque tube. This is all inset in a bearing bronze. At every one of these locations is the inset where it passes through the other ribs. There's over a quarter inch clearance all the way around every rib. So if there's any flex or movement, it can't make contact anywhere. The bearing bronze is unbelievable. No matter how much pressure I put on it, it is smooth as silk, no play. And then the way I've got it done is you do not want to have a situation where you have an asymmetrical flap or one side of the wing basically being different than the other. And so you don't want to use two motors, one driving each side, even if you had a great pairing electronic system that ran them in sync. It's just not as safe as doing one larger linear actuator drive motor, flat motor, that runs all of the torque tube, wing tip to wing tip together. So the way it's done is there is a oversized thick torque tube in Scrappy, and it has two hub assemblies that bolt directly to the ends of that, that then bolt to the wings. Once those are bolted together, there is absolutely no possible way to have one flap or one side of a wing ever move out of sync of the other. It can't happen. The failure point would be if the flat motor failed, it fails in a locked position, whatever position it was last, which would still be flyable. If the flaps were fully deployed, the ailerons were drooping, it would lock in that position, both sides the same, and you could fly indefinitely safe, just not as fast. Or if it locked in fully retracted position, then you would just land a little faster. Now with the size of the wings we have, even with the flaps at zero, the leading edge device is tucked into high speed mode, this will still land extremely slow. So there's no configuration in any type of a failure that would cause an asymmetric flap or an unflyable event. It can't happen. The actual full stop complete movement of the linear actuator is the linear actuator itself, both electronically and mechanically. After that, the torque tubes also have stop outs, lock outs, that lock out in the main structure. But the only way that can happen is if the linear actuator literally snapped in half, which this is so oversized, that's virtually an impossible event other than maybe a crash of some kind and breaking the wings. But if it did, the secondary is a full bump stop designed into the full torque tubes that goes tip to tip and never a bind on any of the smaller moving components at all. The solar panels, you'll have to excuse, <clears throat> they're kind of messy look, I've got this wrinkly plastic on it, just protecting it until we're done for the last final install. So I'm gonna drop all these in here real quick. I've got Strappy down here in safe taxi mode so that it's planted right down on the ground, the tail's high, front's down, just to make it easier to bolt the wings on because we're about ready to bolt these wings up. I've been doing search and rescue with my twin brother, Mark, coming up on 20 years now. Scrappy is going to be a rescue aircraft. So we wanted power on board. We wanted one ton power on board, which is why we have the inverter and so many banks of batteries. But it's more than that. It's about what happens if I have a problem as well. If I have an engine out or I need to land in the middle of nowhere. Unfortunately, we have been on rescue calls for aircraft where for one reason or another, it took several days to find the downed aircraft, that they survived the landing or the parachute pole, 
or the field they got in, but didn't have enough power to continually radio for help or some kind of power to keep them warm at night. Anyone? And so I want to talk a little bit about what I always carry in an aircraft. My wife, Chandra, made a giant survival bag, and it weighs a lot. It has water, sleeping bags, essentials, first aid, a suture kit, and all the things that you would want if you had an emergency and had to land in the middle of nowhere and rescue couldn't get you for several days. We have lost too many people that survived the landing and then froze. So on Scrappy, I wanted the ability to be able to plug in an electric sleeping black bag that will always be in Scrappy, both for camping, just to stay warm and comfortable all night. But if I were left stranded, I could just stay in the aircraft and have unlimited power, run a sleeping bag all night with electric heat or electric jackets, never get cold, be protected, from the environment and survive those long nights that often take people. So that was one of the ideas of the solar systems was to be able to charge during the day and power all night anything I wanted. So how much power do I have on Scrappy? There's nine solar panels per side, 18 solar panels total. They put out 50 watts a piece. If you just break that down, I have about 900 watts of power. Now, I can always rotate the aircraft to get best position to the sun, but you still can't always maximize a full 50 watts per panel. But if you do break it down into a 12 volt system that is scrappy, I actually have the ability to produce 60 to 65 amps of power, which actually means if I were flying scrappy, and had a dual alternator failure, or maybe I lost my primary and my backup being smaller couldn't power everything, I can turn one dial on the side of my aircraft and my solar can power all of my Garmin screens, GPSs, radios, and a bunch left over, meaning it's running my electronic ignition and keeping all the batteries in my wings fully charged without having to load shed anything in my panel. And then if I happen to have a long cross country, maybe I'm crossing the ocean, I do want to travel some long places with Scrappy. If I lost dual alternators or a battery failure of the primary system for the aircraft with a quick switch of a switch, I have complete redundancy off solar I could continue all 10 hours of range Scrappy has on board in fuel with everything powered up into the night. If I had to finish a leg over uh, night before I could get to an airport, the solar would keep me topped off until that sun goes down and then I can run for hours and hours and literally outrun my fuel tanks on my spare batteries in the wings of Scrappy. So there's a lot of little things I wanted to make sure I tied in. Uh, I hope that answers some of your questions. I'm super excited to have Scrappy powered up for camping, backcountry playing, and all my friends, a lot of you use one wheels. So uh, Scrappy is always available. Keep all your one wheels charged up. I can plug you all in at the same time. I was holding back. The one of the reasons I have dual struts on an aircraft that has a metal wing is because of two primary factors. One, as soon as I put the solar panels in, you lose part of that upper skin integrity for anti-twist. And so the double strut helps for that application because I could have just added a full skin under the panel and kept that integrity, but I didn't need to add the weight when I have double struts because I am hanging something bigger than mountain bikes under Scrappy's wings. Ron and I got two full-size motorcycles, full electric, and those weigh about 130 pounds a piece. And because of how heavy they are and they're connected at the furthest front of the wing and the back of the wing and need to be able to handle a 5G bump, 
I left two struts on the aircraft, even though I am a metal-winged aircraft, so that I can carry those loads. So Scrappy is designed to land places Ron and I have already been, places in Alaska, places in the high Rocky Mountains, all over the place where we landed and we hiked around for hours, but we wanted to go 20 miles, 50 miles way back. So we now have an aircraft that can land in whatever little spot we can find, but then go exploring places we've always wanted to go or the waterfalls you just can't find a landing spot for that are 30 miles away. And we have an aircraft that can land, have already kept the motorcycles, full-size motocross motorcycles, fully charged in route, play with it all day long, come back in and plug both of them in at the same time and top them back off so we can camp for days and never run out of power. So we can't wait to do that. Use it in search and rescue, playing in the back country. I hope you guys like this silly build of ours. You guys know the drill. Let's see you real soon. We gotta get some wings on so this thing can fly. Let's get back to work.